All right, Aaron, so you remember how we did this. We did this for the SEC, of which we will be releasing a graphic of soon. Today we're going to do it with the Big Ten. Our goal is to set up a SNAPS official objective ranking of all the Power Five uh, coaches, or each Power Five set of coaches, right? So we did our SEC last week. This week the Big Ten Mm -hmm. is on the table, and we haven't seen each other's lists. Um, We'll see how close we are, and then we'll kind of talk it out like we did the last one to, to arrive at our decision. Um, Aaron, I'll let you start. I feel like the top of this is pretty obvious, though. So I'm going to be intrigued yes. to see if we're simpatico. Go ahead. Who's your number one? No, no, I want you to start. I want you to start. Oh, yeah, I got Harbaugh to... one. Yeah, I got, I got Harbaugh, Harbaugh one. one as well. I got Harbaugh one day, too. I think Harbaugh yep. is, is, is done it with, with less talent at, at Michigan. And back to back years, I think that that's that's huge. He's 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 fl- all of a sudden he has flipped the script of Ohio State dominating for two decades. Now all of a sudden it seems like Michigan is the aggressors. Michigan is the better team. Michigan's the better coach team with great talent. I'm not saying like there's like this huge disparity of like gap of you know Ohio State talents is way up here, Michigan's way down here. They're not that far but, off, but Ohio State I, I would still say is better talent than Michigan. But somehow yeah, yeah. Harbaugh's found a way. At home and on the, I mean, on the road last year, dominated their ass. So, like year one was was you know we kind of blamed the weather, like you know, hey, it was snowing, not 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 you know, advantage the team that wants to run the football, but you know, fool me once, you know, shame on me, no shame on you, yes, fool me twice, shame no, on fool you, yeah, shame yeah. on you, yeah. That, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm not gonna get fooled again. They're they're the better football team right now. I think they're a better football team this year, and Harbaugh's done a great job. Did you just stumble into an accidental George Bush quote? Uh, yes, what is it? From? <laughs> you ain't, you ain't going to fool me twice. <laughs> you won't, won't get fooled again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I ain't going to so, get fooled again, damn it. I, look, I, I agree, man. Um, I think it's as simple as what you said. Harbaugh's done more with less. Yep. Ryan Day's yep. done less with more. And I really appreciate the fact that and, – and let's be clear. These are our 2023 rankings, okay? So it's, yes. it's very, you know, what have you done for me lately here? Because it is wild to think just two years ago, we, we thought Harbaugh should be fired. We were calling him less miles, ready to sacrifice him, send him to pasture. And something happened where that off-meta, old-school toughness approach just – finally got through to his players. Now, we've actually talked about this. There's been really good reporting on this and how he kind of changed a lot of things. He became more open with his players. He kind of adjusted his style a bit. He empowered his assistant coaches. So he went within himself, found change while still maintaining that toughness philosophy, and he finally got that message through to this recent generation, and they have been awesome. Now, look, Ryan Day, best offensive mind in the Big Ten, no doubt. No doubt, coach number two, Mm -hmm. since he showed up, all Ohio State's offense does is throw for – 40 to 50 touchdowns a year. Um, all they do is win. Uh, but you had a pretty good, you had a pretty good um take thesis, the 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 foundations of a great take, Aaron. When you were asking in the group text the other day, like if he like when does Ryan Day start feeling a little heat for for yeah. for being close but never getting to light that cigar? Well, I wonder if 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 they lose for a third year this year in a row to Michigan. You know, and say they drop another one along the way. Like, I know we talked about it yesterday. Like, Ohio State, you kind of bank on the fact that they're going to have an elite quarterback that's going to throw for 40 plus touchdowns. But what if they don't? What if they do finally get their DJU and Ohio State's nine and three and you get blown out by Michigan? Michigan's moved on to playoffs for, for a third straight year and you're kind of sitting back saying, damn, like that's three years losing to Michigan. And I don't think the seat was super hot this year, but th- there were people talking though. Like there was at least a narrative out there that fans are not happy with the way in which he's running the program. And if it happens for three straight years, I don't think he gets fired, but I do think in his head, he starts to think maybe I, it is tight. Cause I mean, he has also been linked with possibly moving to the NFL. So yeah. I, it's a big year for him. It really is for, I love him as a head coach. I think this is all stupid, but there's also college football. And you are always compared to your biggest rival and your biggest rival is Michigan. And you don't want to lose them three years in a row, especially when you've dominated for 20 years. So well, it, Aaron, it, I think you really nailed the, the premise of the show. I think this is stupid, but it is also college football. 
is really like, like <laughs> that's true. Really, yeah, really like eighty yeah. percent of our conversations. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that, that is way. that's the, no, yeah, in the best it way. Is. That that is the perfect summation of just yeah, the the college football universe, uh, essentially. Which is I why mean, I they will lose their minds. Stoner. Ohio State fans, they will lose their damn minds if they're ten and two and lose the final game of the year to Michigan and but, Michigan. But they kind of should they though. It's a little warranted. They're not out of place I know. doing that because I mean. Look, we talked about it yesterday with FPI. There's an obvious big three in college football. Yeah. And you talk about the talent cap being not that much, but I mean, like, it is kind of significant between Ohio State and Michigan. Same way it's kind of significant between Alabama and LSU, or has been in a lot of the recent years. Like, there is a clear big three that recruits the best, yeah. and um, there's one of those three without a championship, you know? The other two have multiple championships now at this point. So, Ryan Day, where are you at, okay? Get out of here. Well, you're number two on the Snaps Big Ten list because you're actually awesome. Yeah. But you but you just have an impossibly high standard you have me now. Uh, number three, I got Luke Fickle. You know, if Ooh. I would do more or less getting Cincinnati to the uh to the playoff. I got, I got yeah, I got Fickle here. You as well? Dude, you've been so down on Fickle, though. I was I was shocked. I thought you and I I thought you and I are gonna have a huge debate on this fickle thing. You kept saying like you know, he's first time now with the big boys, and we're going to see what he looks like. And no, you said that. No, this I don't past think I said that. Yeah, you have. I, You've been no, a little I like the, fickle. As I feel brain. like the I feel like the only thing that I've said about Luke Fickle on snaps is that I think he would be a good but authoritarian mm -hmm. leader in a zombie apocalypse. Nope. Like, nope. and he would have nope. slick back Negan like hair. Uh, no, I think um, you've been no, pro Matt Fickle. Rule and you've been anti Fickle. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, look. When T Cobb takes over, I can't be responsible for T Cobb. Like those are not T Bob's takes. Okay. Oh. By the way, Matt Rule hosting a one day football camp, Aaron Vince Papali style, like invincible, the old open tryout. Everybody's welcome. Okay. You're a big running back. We like whatever. Everybody's welcome to come try out for fullback. Ever since then, Jake Hester is officially on the corn on the Cobb team, Corn Hub. He's nice. now Jake Husker. Okay, we're just waiting on you, Aaron. We're waiting on you, Husker and T Cobb. We're out, yeah. But yeah, that's what do no, I no. get? To be what's, clear, what's, that's what's why my, I'm waiting for a nickname to kind of. You got to squat up first. No, you got to squat up first, dude. Uh, yeah, split personality. Thank you, thank you. I actually think Luke Fickle's a great coach. Like obviously, he was yes. freaking awesome yep. in Cincinnati. The amount of uh, talent that he amassed. There were so many NFL guys on that playoff team. Um, uh, yeah, he he he's great. Luke Fickle's the third best coach in the Big Ten, and I think Wisconsin fans should be over the moon that they got him. All right. Uh, we are the same on three. I'm, I'm with you. I think that was one of the biggest hires this offseason. He is, he is, he is an absolute stud. He's a winner. Uh, about time that he left Cincinnati and, and, and took a big boy job. It's, it's, a, it's a good spot too, man. Wisconsin's a great location for him. I think the area is great for him. He can recruit up there in that part of the country. I think he's going to build a consistent winner that should be able to compete. So uh, I'm with you. Luke Fickle at three. I am Go interested ahead. to see Wisconsin run the spread, right? I mean, hiring Phil I Longo is know. a choice. Uh, I don't think, and we're going to find out, but you still got to play to your strengths. I, you just can't beat your head against the wall if you got a bunch of little, you know, white guys that are running four sixes. Like, I'm not going to run the spread offense if that's who I got. Like, you got to be your personnel a little bit too. Yeah, we'll so, see. We'll see. We'll see. It's kind of like um, Alabama, you know, with with them. It's like everyone's like, "Oh, they're going to be so tough and rugged," and you know, this person. I'm like, dude, their best position heading into this year. They were a little bit down last year, but they were young. Was their receivers? So, like, utilize what you got. You're not going to just yeah. beat your head against the wall if your offense line's okay, and you know, you don't know as much about your running back. So, I, I you know, Wisconsin. I don't expect them to be ten personnel. You know, four receivers. If does got, Phil Longo does Phil Longo maybe know two guys that went four fives? I mean, does Phil? Long, I don't think he does. I dude. just don't know. Uh, it's going to be awesome. It doesn't really fit. Or. That doesn't really fit Fickle's personality either to run a spin. No, offense. not at all. That's why at it's going to be so fascinating to see. No, uh, but look, we think Fickle can make it work. Third best coach in the Big Ten. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, I, I got James Franklin at four. Obviously, right? Okay. We did not no? do this together. I promise. But I got James Franklin oh, okay. at four too. Yeah, like we said, the, the, I, I've, the never, I've never been a big fan of him. Five on is I where really it gets haven't. interesting. Oh, why not? Yeah, I agree. I don't know. Maybe I just had salty feelings to him from when he was at Vanderbilt um, and just didn't really like the way he interacted with our coaches on the field at times. But 
He's not a, he's, he's just he's good. He's I, good. Vanderbilt as an I just SEC remember like I remember him so, and, I always uh, remember him and Grantham like about to fight each other after one of our games and I just always like, sounds had to tight. defend Grantham which is stupid of ever defending Grantham. But I did because yeah, I was going to say, really, you're really going to stick up for Grantham yeah. in, a, in a verbal I know. altercation. I know. There's I know. a picture of Todd Grantham that has so much real estate in my head, and it's one where he's got like pursed lips, and it's either from a year or two ago, and he's like glaring, but his facial features look so tiny it looks as if it's a snapchat filter that makes like your face really tiny and then he has just this wide leathery face that looks like it's like i i i shouldn't even bring this up because it's so niche in my brain and tough to um really paint verbally but todd grantham looks weird as fuck to me i guess is what i'm uh is what i'm getting at uh, but no, do James Franklin won at Vanderbilt? Okay, like, I know, I know. If you know. can win enough at Vanderbilt to make yep. uh, Aaron Murray like hate you because you were good, yeah. you you yeah. get like all the points. Now, they now, beat us senior year. Jeez, I, I know a lot of um. Oh, senior year. Wow, fuck. I know a yeah. lot of uh. I know a lot of people will be yelling that James Franklin should be over Luke Fickle. Franklin just needs to win the big ones. Okay. He takes advantage right now of everybody below them in the Big Ten, which is nothing. That's nothing to turn your nose up at. But he's got to. He's. I mean, he's got to win a Big Ten. Uh, he, he's got to win the big ones. James uh, Luke Fickle's been to the playoffs. What is their, uh, their schedule? Do they get? Do they get either of those games at home this year? Because I like their roster. I really like their roster. I love their backs. Uh, I like the young quarterback. They get Michigan at home. They're at Ohio State. It's all about Alar. That's actually in King Killer Chronicles, my favorite fantasy I've ever read as an adult. It's all about harnessing your alar. Um, okay, number five, it gets interesting. Where are you at here, Aaron? Let's see if we stick together. I just went with – we want to say it together? No, no, no. You go first. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to go with Bielema. At oh, yes. We're still we're still are together. Different? No, really? no, we're together. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I thought you were going somewhere else. No, nah, man. Uh, I, look, I mean, he's he a was... perfect fit. He's a perfect fit. Perfect. Great start to the season good. last year. Obviously, they yep. cut the bed to end, but like it's Illinois. Like I think this is where it gets hard because there is it is it is it is such a harder coaching job after the the first four. Really, mm-hmm. after like I don't even know if you. I guess you can throw Wisconsin in there, but like after those four, like it gets significantly harder because yes. you do not have the talent. And Illinois obviously doesn't have the talent, but I mean he's just. He's made to be there in Illinois, and what he's done since he took over a couple of years ago has been impressive. So I, I just the fit more than anything gets me excited about him. Yeah, he took over an awful situation in Arkansas, and granted, it stayed awful probably too long under him. Um, they showed life for a little bit, but ultimately, this is a Big Ten ranking, and when Brett Bielema has been the head coach in the Big Ten, he's done very well. Right, he did great at Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and he did great. At, he did great in year one. At Illinois, far better, far more interesting. Like we talked so much more Illinois and Brett Bielema than I ever would have fathomed last season. Uh, I feel okay, dude. Now that we got five the same, I feel like we should have six the same. No, you're definitely not gonna have this one with me, Kirk Ferentz. Nope. Oh my god, dude! Of course it's Kirk to fuck up the drive, fuck up all the offensive momentum. I should have left. You know I can't pick a guy that would like that of an offense. You can't oh, tell me I'm picking what? a guy with that offense. You're such that, a hater. You, all I Kirk know why you does is win. Why all he does is win games. Him. Why? Why do you? What is this conspiratorial? I know why nepotism. you pick Kirk Ferentz. Nepotism. <laughs> nepotism. That's why you love nepotism. So, yes. I mean, that is true. I am a huge beneficiary of nepotism. I've, I've said it plenty. So yeah, I, I, you're right. I the only reason I have Kirk here is because he oh. hired his own son Brian and refuses to fire him, even though he's awful. Just, uh, just hey, fire he froze his salary. That's such bad coaching. I don't care. You don't try to fire his ass. He's just awful. What, you, like, you really? On, dude, dude. He, he's 198 and 136 in 27 seasons. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He's, he's incredible. I mean, he's legitimately incredible. He took over back in 1999. Mm-hmm. He took over a 1 and 10 Iowa. Four years later, 11 and 2, 10 and 3, 10 and 2. 11 and 2 and 09. I mean, all I'm seeing is 10 win seasons, 10 and 4 in 2021. Uh, you're, you're, you're just like, who, who is better than him left on this list? 
I can't get over the offense. I, I had PJ Fleck going next. Shut the fuck up. What has PJ Fleck done? That PJ Fleck done a you're, lot. You're, back to back nine win seasons. Uh, Big Ten Coach of the Year back in eighteen. Like, okay, we're geez. talking ten win seasons. Okay, I got Fleck right after Ferenc. Actually, I have a rule, okay, but we'll have that okay. fight later. Um, uh, bro, I just I there. Look, okay, okay, on. okay, okay. Let's do some horse trading here. I will I, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you. I will give you friends at 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 what was it five or are we at six? six at six. At six. I'll give. I'll give you. A t- I. I. The offense kills me a little bit. I. I, I do hate the fact Who that cares? he just can't. Fuck hey, Aaron, up fire his there's damn three son. phases to the game. Just fire your son. No, no. I know. No. He's. But, he's. He's. Um. All right. We'll put him at six. But I do okay, want Fleck then, at seven. I, that's fine. That's what I'd say. That's a. That's a fair trade. Okay. Fleck at seven. Um. And I, I guess. I guess. Look. Uh. In all seriousness, with friends, I think he maximizes talent. I think the defense is badass. He's created quite the environment there. I mean, is he limited in terms of ever going to get you a natty? Absolutely. But you're never going to have just like a shitty year. Like you're never going to have to worry about the wheels completely falling you off and you hate everything. Though, you know, watching that offense last year, there's probably a lot of Hawkeye fans who are, you know, not necessarily agreeing with me. But um, yeah, no, all Kirk French does is he's a staple of consistency. Number six on this list. Now, why do you like P.J. Fleck more than Matt Rule? Why do I be? Um, I, I just, I'm not sold on rule yet until he does it. Like that's my thing. Like he hasn't been in the game. He, he's he's had success in the past. He's had this interesting journey. Um, I want to see him do it at a place that has struggled as of late. I just think I just think it's I think it's a hurdle. I think PJ Fleck has Minnesota in a good spot right now. So I know what I'm I know what I'm buying into. It's it's a yeah. stable program. Matt Rule's taking over a program that's not stable, and you know he doesn't seem to be a guy that wants to stick around for a long time. So I don't know. I just I, I, I got, he's one that I got to see it to believe it first. Like like Fickle, I can believe because he's done it and he took a team to the playoffs, and it's been recent and he's built a lot of consistency there. Matt Rule's like a you know get in get out kind of guy, and I want to see him stick it out. And I want to see what this program looks like. That's fair. Um, and to your point, okay, I you know, I'm maybe a, a little guilty of not giving Fleck the roses that he deserves for his times at, for his time in Minnesota, especially because this is a what have you done for me lately list, like we said. And he takes over, goes five and seven in year one, but then immediately seven six into eleven and two. I'm not counting the COVID year where they go three and four because whatever. Then nine and four, nine and four. That's it's pretty damn good. And he's four and zero oh yeah. in bowl games at Minnesota. So honestly, Frince and Fleck maybe a little more interchangeable than I was making it out to be. I still think Kirk should be there for longevity as well, doing yes. it over time. But uh, Fleck, I had a rule. I, I'm absolutely down with that. But rule is after Fleck, no? Rule is after Fleck. Yes, I will put okay. rule after Fleck. Yes. Um, and I'll and, let you and spew beautifulness on him. No, look, I just look, I think that Nebraska won football games for a hundred years. Okay. Yeah. And I think that that just doesn't disappear. I think this idea that you just can't be successful in um, Lincoln anymore is simply not true. I'm not saying that you're going to win national championships every year, but there is power in that soil. Um, and Matt Rule has proven to be able to turn things around twice, you know? And so that's like as good of a turn. This is the point. Matt Rule's attempting one of the biggest turnarounds in college football history in that we've never seen one of these schools fall from such great heights for such an extended period of time. This is him turning around the Titanic, essentially, whereas in the past he's done on smaller levels, right? Started at Temple and then Baylor. You will never find a better turnaround resume for the ultimate turnaround job. And that makes a lot of sense in my mind. And in the age of NIL, don't tell me you can't get people to Lincoln because people up there will pay. And, you know, I just, in my head, I don't know if this is true, Warren Buffett's a big buster, booster, okay? And he has the most money in the world. Um, Next on this list, so PJ Fleck, Matt Rule. Uh, I got Mike Loxley from Maryland. Nice. You too. It's kind of, it is it is a pretty big drop from here of, of coaches and, it's funny. I mean, Mike Lossley, it kind of feels like he's, he's on the hot seat a little bit, but I, I, I just – the hard part is for all these 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 teams and schools is is you do have two of the big biggest brands in college football that 
are in your conference and are fighting for championships. Everyone, it's kind of like the SEC. You know, everyone's trying to be Georgia. Everyone's trying to be Alabama. It's the same thing in this conference. Everyone's trying to be Ohio State. Everyone's trying to be Michigan. And if you're falling short of that, you know, you are, uh, uh, you're done in three or four years and we're on to the next. It's like an ever, it's rotation, 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 yeah. rotation. Same thing in the SEC. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just like the SEC. It's just instead of Alabama, Georgia, it's it's yeah. Michigan, Ohio State. But I, I, I'm i I'm with you with him next at Mike Boxley. Um, I think How about he's, gonna, he's got to win more in the conference. He's got to win more in the conference. He, overall record has been great the past couple of years for, for Maryland, but he just has not been successful at all. Um, and it's kind of hard because you're, you're in the East. I mean, that's a, that's a difficult place to be. Like you are in the hardest. Yeah. They are, they are loaded on the East side of the big 10, Michigan, Ohio state, Penn state, Maryland, Michigan state. I mean, it is, it's a gauntlet. So I understand why you have struggles in conference play, but I would still like to see them get over that 500 and be a little bit more consistent there. I, I do want to say that they've gotten um, one conference game better each of the Loxley era. You, they still need to win more, but they started one and eight year one, two and three, three and six, four and five. So there is like yeah. actual improvement and they run a sexy offense, which is cool. They do uh, number offense. 10 on this list, I got Mel Tucker uh, because, you know, he we've seen the high team go to and they were high, but... He was ahead of the game in a chaotic time, you know. Uh, yes. He climbed that ladder of chaos. Now everybody's caught up, and his message just doesn't appear to be landing like it once did. Uh, who do you have at ten? I got him too. Yeah. Okay. I, I, nice. It's it's a it's it's, it's we're, we're getting really to some um, some questionable coaches from here on out. So it's kind of you know who who's done a little something good is is where I'm putting them. Yeah. Okay. So 10 Mel Tucker, um, 11, yep. I actually got the young gun, Ryan Walters. And Ooh. you could say, oh, he should be last because he's unproven, but he's got an interesting resume where um, when you went from Barry Odom to Eli Drinkwitz at Mizzou, he actually kept on Walters, right? He is viewed to be one of the top fast rising defensive minds in the entire country, 37 years old, kind of a sexy hire at Purdue. And really the three guys below him, I'm just kind of done with. Like, yeah. I think they're past their prime. I think, like, stick a fork in him, right? So he may not have done uh, anything, Walters, yet, but he has enough of a hot shot reputation combined with the potential to do things, whereas the three guys below him, I think, are just like, which is I have Shiano 12, Fitzgerald 13, Allen 14. Um, they're just dead in the water to me. Yeah, I, I must say, when you, the last three, you make a good case for him uh, before those three just because, like, we, we, know what we're, we know what we have with those others. And we know yes. it's not good, so exactly. at least let's let's give him an opportunity to prove us that he sucks before we move him to the bottom of the list. So um, I don't I I think the bottom three are kind of how you whatever you like uh, the 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 least. So I mean, well, I think Shiano I think Shiano has spot. to be atop the I think Shiano has to be atop you? the um yes atop the the He's atop of the bottom twenty two six and twenty it just. Ugh. Yeah, but remember Ray Rice? I mean, oh. Ray Rice was tight. Are you talking about like his – I mean, I'm not trying to compare him to his first stand. I'm like, what have you done for me now? Like, who do I want coaching no, today? Yeah. I mean, I guess Pat hasn't done anything the past couple of years. No, I mean, Pat Fitzgerald fell off a cliff from everybody thinking but, but he was who, great. Who, to well, I guess we go this. What, what team has – what's which, which, which is the spot easiest to get more talent, Northwestern, Indiana, or Rutgers? Like, who's doing uh, at least the best with what they have? I mean, I don't know what Northwest. I mean, Northwest is about to have a pretty sick stadium. Like they have investment. Like he gets paid a ton of money. Um, I think. I think Rutgers is harder. Uh, may, maybe there's academic requirements in Northwestern, but like I would much rather live in Chicago. Uh, yeah. I feel like than I would. What is Rutgers, uh, New Jersey? Away, New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also I don't. I don't really there. like that like ruh, ruh, ruh thing that they do and also, either. Like the ultimate uh, Rutgers, more like. Butkers. Oh wow! Um, is that a Piscataway thing? Is that wait, who like who bull, even says no, that? Butkers is who? just butt. Is just booty. You know. I, I was. Oh okay. No, I'm. I'm saying like, are are you making that up, or is that something that people said? Like, who hates Rutgers enough to have made up a chant to spite them? People who live in New York and look down on New Jersey. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, I see now. Snobby New Yorkers. I like the last three though. I'll give it to you. It's a, it's a tougher play, so I'll give it to them. Um, I mean, those bottom three, that is, that is pretty 
significant well, look, Pat, Pat, Pat drop, Fitzgerald, though. the only reason why I'm being so hard on him is because, I mean, he had the 7-2 and two COVID year, but all COVID's kind of a wash to me. That is a great year, though. It was yep. a great year. But, like, I mean, the other years surrounding it, 3-9, and 3-9, and 1-11. and 11. With one eleven being most recent, so, um, and then Tom Ooh. Allen. Look, Tom Allen just he he had the 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 one nice Michael Penix year, um, but you know who the OC was? Kalen DeBoer. Look at what Kalen yeah. DeBoer and Michael Penix are doing at Washington. Tom Allen has no other head coaching resume to speak of. His first job was at Indiana. Job. Um, Tom Allen's the worst coach in the Big Ten. Yeah, but again, big fat paychecks because of that season they they can't fire him because of that either. His oh really? Right. It's is, like a uh, so yes. Anybody who offered a big his buyout is twenty five million dollars. They would fire him before the end of the season. Twenty million dollars any time after oh. that. It drops to like eight million dollars next year, which is still a pretty big chunk for for Indiana. He Neil Brown them same thing at W. Yeah. Who also paid yeah. for a COVID year. The further we get from it, anybody who paid for a COVID year success, you uh, you fucked up. You you just I mean you yeah. you really yep. you 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 used the most out of normal time to make long-term decisions on and it's burning everybody um all right there it is so the list from 14 to 1 tom allen pat fitzgerald 12 greg shiano 11 ryan walters 10 mel tucker 9 mike loxley 8 matt rule 7 pj fleck 6 kirk ferentz Five, Brett Bielema, four, James Franklin, three, Luke Fickle, two, Ryan Day, and number one coach in the Big Ten, Jim Harbaugh.